no weapon, let's say this with me, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. He is my shield and my buckler. He is my strong tower. And he is, goes before me to defeat all my enemies. He's a good God. And he loves me way more than I deserve and way more than I could even comprehend and fathom with this little peanut brain of mine. And I'm so grateful that he's in this house with us today to remind you and to remind me that he is with us. He does not leave. He sticks. He stays. He never leaves us unattended. He is watching over us. So if you're in a place right now where you don't even know how you're going to make it till tomorrow, I want you to know God is for you. And if you will surrender your heart and your life to him and submit to his authority in your life, he will turn your situation around and it will work for good for you. Everything that the enemy means for your destruction, he says, I will turn it around and make it a good thing for you. He's a good God, isn't he? Come on, give him praise. i uh -huh. 
doctor says you are still alive. No matter what the banker says, you are still God. Oh, how your mercy and love pursue me, Lord. I can't outrun you, Lord. I can't outrun you. power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Let's just say his name. Jesus. Jesus.
freedom. It's for freedom. It's for freedom that He sets you free. Yeah. Not to be bound up by the chains of the world, the chains of disease and addiction and affliction and oppression. He's going to break every chain. This is the last Sunday of the year. We're just going to lay all the chains of 2014 yeah. right here at the feet of Jesus. And we're not going to look back. We're just going to lay them all down right here. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Everything that the enemy tried to take from you this year, God's going to give it back to you. He's going to restore you. He's going to restore your health. He's going to restore your finances. He's going to restore your family. He's calling the wayward sons home right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He's going to break every chain. Break every chain. We're not going to go in this new year with chains around our, our hands and our feet. And the burdens of the, that the enemy tries to place on us. We're going to say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the sacrifice, by the cross, we, all those chains are broken right now. We say we are healed and we are whole and we are forgiven. And we are covered in the blood and we are filled with the spirit in the name of Jesus right now. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, I believe there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. We thank you that the chains are broken right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we have decided to follow you. No turning back. No turning back. And we say we're going to go forth with bold, outrageous faith this year. And we're going to believe in you for greater things. We ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. All God's people said, amen, amen. Go have a seat. I think some chains have been broken uh, this morning, amen? Man, that's awesome. I love to worship. You know, uh, one of the things that, I, that, that I've learned about just being in ministry, that if the main focus isn't to win souls, we are just entertaining. Amen. And I think that one of the most amazing things about being a part of Fellowship of the Nations is that we are a ministry that is focused on winning souls and making disciples. Uh, we have an honor and the privilege that all, all year long uh, uh, we've been supporting uh, many uh, ministries uh, uh, across the globe. And we actually have a few pictures that we want to share with you of your faithful giving and your faithful partnership. Being a part of our ministry, uh, we can be able to present. There's uh, uh, This picture right here is actually one of the graduating classes of our nation's Bible Institute, MBI. And uh, that's one of them. And this is the other class that actually uh, graduated and, 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 and got their discipleship for the Lord. So let's give a strong hand clap to God because we're equipping people with the necessary tools to be powerhouse soul winners for Jesus. Amen. And then now we have another picture of people actually getting baptized. Uh, it looks like a river or, or, or something like that. It's 41 baptisms that were uh, uh, baptized in West Bengal, India. So this is something that you're seeing with your own eyes. Amen. Let's give a strong hand clap to the Lord. Of what is happening when you give. You see, the gospel, even if it's Christmas, even if it's New Year's, the gospel doesn't stop. Yeah. 
Amen? So we need to be part of that. I've learned that if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else shall be added unto you. I'm a living witness to that. So be faithful with your giving. Be faithful with your tithes. Also, uh, on, uh, it, uh, uh, there's still time left to be able to give. Uh, if you want to give an extra offering uh, for the, the, uh, 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 the ministry and, and uh, uh, for, for these ministers to keep going, uh, until Wednesday, you can still qualify to be able to be uh, having the tax write-off for 2014. Amen. So at this moment, let's bow our heads and let's go into a moment in prayer and let's bless the tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for allowing us, Lord, to just be in your presence, God. Lord, we thank you, God, because our vision, Father God, is greater than ourselves, God, greater than our community, God, greater than even, Father God, of what we know here, God. Lord, you have told us, God, to go out, Lord, and preach the gospel, God, to those that don't know, Lord, about you, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you, God, because it takes finances, Lord, and we have had faithful people, Lord, throughout the year, Father, that have been faithful in their ties and giving father and even those that are have been willing to be able to give a little extra god we bless them god and we ask you god that you meet their needs father god that you just keep a, a, a growing lord all the opportunity that they're seeking for father that 2015 will be a year of pro a greater provision father and that you show up god when it seems that everything is limited lord you will show lord your faithfulness father you will be jehovah jireh our provider we thank you for all that you do lord in in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless. Who are we that you would be mindful of us? What do you see? It's worth looking our way. In ways that we never should be Sweet release From the grip of the chain Like interceding from the way My heart no longer can keep from
to wake up. Are you ready? This is the Lord's declaration. God is ready. God is ready. God is ready. Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Are you desperate? God is ready to change your life. Return to the Lord, your God. He wants to fill your life with hope. For he is gracious. You need hope. We live in a society driven by power. Are you cold? He is compassionate. Driven to succeed. Are you burned out? Driven to be famous. Are you angry? Driven to be in control. Are you ready? But for all the promises made, for all the good intentions, the world fails us. Someone, a friend, a loved one, a neighbor, a stranger. Someone comes along and pulls the plug, turns out the lights. Have you been let down? He is rich in faithful love. Are you ready for life change? And there we are, left in the darkness once again. Are you ready to break this endless, futile circle? Defeated, alone, powerless. Why do we do this to ourselves? If my people who are called by my name the power of all power will humble themselves is only a prayer away. If they will pray and seek my face boldly and confidently enter into the fullness of God. Do you want to be heard? Without God's power, we do not have a hope. If they will turn from their evil ways then I will hear them from heaven. Through prayer, through fasting. Prayer and fasting. We can know the power of God. For he is gracious. He is compassionate. He is rich in faithful love. Do you want to know this power? God can do more in a moment. In a moment. In a moment. Than you can do in a lifetime. For nothing is impossible with God. Are you ready? You can take part and make the difference. This can only come about through prayer and fasting. Are you ready? He wants to do something powerful and supernatural in your life. My eyes will now be open and my ears attentive to the prayers of this place. It's time to wake up. Are you ready? question is, are you ready? Whew, that, that was about three of you. Are you ready? Woo! All right. Hey, man, I am so excited that you swam on in here. Cold morning, didn't want to get out of bed, and here you are. You did it. You finished strong. So way to go. Give yourselves a hand, man. You did good. You did good. If you're here for the first time, we greet you in the name of Jesus. So glad you're here. And uh, I've got some dear friends up here. Y'all can meet them at the end of the service. But uh, I'm glad you're here. Hope you had a great, great Christmas. And um, we're going to have an incredible new year. Amen. So uh, y'all ready? We're, we're going to uh, start today, and we're going to jump into a... Um, kind of what we're going to be doing in 2015, especially in January. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Anybody got the word? Word up, hold it in the air like you really, really care. Say it together. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I will hide His Word in my heart so that I might not sin against God. Holy Spirit, give me ears to hear and strength to obey. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Take your Bibles, and I want you to turn to the... Uh, the book of Daniel, and we're going to be jumping into today because when we look in the Bible, we see all the, the incredible prophets and the patriarchs in the Bible and, uh, and the difference they made for their generation. And what I want us today to, to look at the fact that you're no different than those guys back there. God used them for a specific purpose. He calls them to be prophets. He calls them to be apostles. He calls them to be preachers and teachers called us all to be evangelists, I believe. And so uh, when we look at our life going into 2015, we want to see that God wants to do the same thing through us to reach our generation that he did back then. And do you all believe that? Uh, okay, well, here's, here's what I want us to do. We, today we want to look at, uh, at Daniel. And uh, really the question is, if we 
really would take, take God serious and say, Lord, I want you to use me. As you did with Daniel, as you did with Isaiah, as you did with some of those, even though they had specific callings on their life. But if you would say, I want you to use me that way. Let there be an impact. Let your same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, living in me, begin to work. I don't want just an average Christian life. I want the abundant life that you promise. Amen? And so when we look at that, ask that of yourself. God, can you possibly use me like that? Can you use me to make a difference so that I'll see people saved? So that I can maybe be a Bible teacher? So I can uh, allow God to do something extraordinary in my life? And that's how I want you to see when we go through this, and some of it comes about, and you're going to see, by prayer and fasting. When Jesus was, uh, he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, while he was up there, down below there was a, a dad who brought his son uh, to, to the disciples. And the disciples tried to cast out this demon. It wasn't happening. And so when Jesus came down, he's like, oh, guys, here you go, little faith. You know, and then he cast the demon out, and, and, uh, and everything was fine. And so they pulled Jesus aside and said, hey, why can't we do that? He said, there's some things only happen, it comes about with prayer and fasting. In other words, we can't do casual Christianity and expect the miraculous. God has asked us to go a little, another step. We're going to another level. All right, so as, as the video, the bumper said, are you ready? And the people said, yeah, amen, amen. So let's look in, uh, in the book because when we, we look at, I got my iPad's going crazy. Anyway, so the first thing is, uh, I'll ask you a couple of questions. If, if not us, who? If not us, who's going to do it? Now, what do you think about that? Because I don't think that the people on the streets that are slinging dope and the drug addicts and everything else, I don't think they're interested in evangelizing the lost, do you? I don't think a lot of those who have their own agendas to live lifestyles the way they want to, I don't think that they're going to be the ones who will be doing it. So if not us, then who is going to share the gospel? So we as Fellowship of the Nations, we're a church. We're a lighthouse right here in this community. And so we ask the question, if not us, who? And if not now, when? So how about in 2015, we would say, I want to focus on Jesus. I want to focus on what he desires to do in my life. And I want to see God move in the miraculous. And the people said, Amen. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, this is going to be just a quick message, and I want to uh, jump into it. We're going to be a praying church. All right, the first part, we're going to be a praying church. Now, I took you, we, we went through and we studied about, Lord, teach me how to pray. And so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, that particular subject, but we are going to be a praying church. The, the scripture that they just had on the, on the bumper is a scripture I want you to, uh, to memorize. Now, if you've been saved for a while, you already know the scripture. But if you haven't been saved for a while, this is new for you. Some of you have just recently been born again. You've got a Bible. And so I want you to go to 2 Chronicles 7.14. All right? It's in the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles 7.14. Some of you, many of you already memorized this scripture. But I want you to take a moment and look because it's an if then. If we do this, then this is going to happen. All right? If I run three miles a day, then I will finally get in shape. <coughs> Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right. And, you know, if I eat the right foods and leave those sand tarts and that fudge alone, then I won't be overweight. And the people say, amen. All right. Did anybody overeat over Christmas holidays? I'm just saying, you know. Okay, three of you are honest. The rest of you can repent when you, at the end of the service, I know you've been <laughs> whooping down them goodies. Anyway, so it's an if then. And so the scripture basically, if my people... Now, who is he talking to? Well, back then, he's talking to the nation of Israel, but today, he's talking to his kids. Our Heavenly Father, we're kids. We're adopted into the family. We are his, his chosen people. We're the bride of Christ. We're the redeemed. That's us. If my people, if you, and I want you to put your name right there. Just take a moment, and, uh, and if you're writing, just kind of put your initials in the Bible. It's okay to write in your Bible, all right? Just put your initials there, all right? If Johnny, if Don, Julie, Zach, put your name right there. If Johnny and the people of the Fellowship of the Nations who are called by my name, do you understand that you have a name? It's not just Johnny Brady. It's Johnny Brady, child of God. Right? Put your name there. That's who you are. That's your identity. 
A lot of people, they take what they do and they make it their identity. Our identity is only found in Jesus Christ. All right? And when we begin to realize that, who am I? And if people ask who you are, because I ask this question a lot of times in counseling, well, who are you? <clears throat> well, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a plumber, I'm a carpenter, I'm a, you know, uh, yeah, that's what you do, but who are you? And so you have to ask the question, who are you? And when you find your identity in Christ, then you see that I can, I can take this scripture and it means what? If my people, if us, the fellowship of the nations who are called by God's name, by my name, my people, my people, what shall humble themselves? Not be full of pride, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Not be full of any of that. But if I will humble myself. And hum, uh, humility comes whenever the Holy Spirit speaks to us and we listen. And then we do something about it. Are you there? See, when the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, then we humble ourselves. Instead of giving excuses, you know, or this is, the, you know, it wasn't that bad, or I can justify it, whatever. But if, if we come to the Lord and say, I understand and I repent, because look what it says. It said, if we'll humble ourselves and pray. Communicate with God. Seems simple, and really it is. God made it so simple. He says, as Lisa was sharing, it's Emmanuel, God with us. We can talk to him anytime. He's always with us. Driving in the car, you know, laying in bed at night, sitting there thinking, get up in the morning, what are you doing? He's there. He's always there. And so when we communicate with him, we're talking with him, and as he convicts us, as he moves in our life, we just respond. And so now he gives us the if then. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and if they will pray, and then I like this, seek my face. I want you to focus on that just for a moment, because we're going to see it in a couple more scriptures. If you come to the point to say, God, I want to, I want to seek your face. I want, to, I want to put all my attention upon you. Have you ever had when you were a little kid, your mom said, listen to me, and you were just doing this, you know, and then they gently grab your face, look at me. I know no parent here has had to, had to do that. Would you look at me? Listen to me. Huh? What did he say? You know what he's saying? Look at me. Seek my face. He's gentle, he's patient, he says, look, you're off track here. I want you to seek my face. As we go into the time of prayer as a church, my, my hope is that, and I pray, this is my prayer also, that I would be able to seek his face like I've never done it before in my life. I want to seek him. But as we seek his face, we will see him when we see him in his holiness when then he shows us maybe some stuff in our life that we need to repent of. Amen? Then what do we do? We humble ourselves. So he goes on to say, if we seek my face, and then what? When you see his holiness and your unholiness, then you do what? You turn. You turn from your wicked ways. What's, what's turn mean? It's repentance. I was walking one way, doing my own thing, enjoying my own sin, and then he, he convicts us. We seek his face, and we go, oh, thou art holy, and I'm not, but please make me holy. And what do we do? We turn towards him. We turn. And so we seek my face, we turn from our wicked ways. Then, when we do these things, if you do this, fellowship of the nations, if we're going to be a praying church, we've got to start prayer 101. If my people right here, fellowship of the nations, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and you will pray, and you're going to, as you see him, see his face in a new way, then you're going to turn from your wicked ways. Then if you do that, then... I'm going to do what? Here come the promises. Here are the promises. If you do this, then this is going to happen. And so we're going to see this in Daniel's life. What? Then I'm going to hear from heaven. I'm going to what? I'm going to forgive your sin. And the people said, amen. See, he doesn't, he doesn't show us wickedness to put guilt, shame, and condemnation on us. He shows it to us so we can turn from it. And then he says, oh, by the way, forgiven, justified, just as if you had never done that. Ooh, really? Yes. Yes. So some of you who are living with guilt and condemnation, you came in and said, oh, man, you don't, man, I'm, I'm glad the roof is still up because, you know, oh, you don't know what I've done. He does. And so he's asking you to go through the process. So as a praying church, we do this. Then we pray, our sins are forgiven, and then healing comes. How many need healing? Amen? A lot of hands. You know, healing. 
What do we need? Well, physical healing, spiritual healing, mentally, emotionally, whatever it may be in our life, that's when the healing flows. So we want to be a praying church. And um, as we do that, these are the promises. Now, we, we talked about uh, in, our, in our time of, of, Lord, teach me how to pray, that we're going to worship. We want to begin in worship, and I encourage you to do that. And we'll, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But just worship, and then you surrender. And then as you surrender everything you are, then you can begin to pray in confidence. And then we talked about, uh, just as a reminder, make it personal. Don't do a lot of babbling, you know, doing the same prayers over and over and over. No, just say, hey, here I am. And here's the stuff that you already know about. Then you make it personal. And the one of the prayers that we ask you to pray for this month, going into this time of prayer and fasting in January, is that you would pray the prayer of Jabez. And the prayer was simply this, Lord, bless me indeed so I can be a blessing to others, right? Not bless me indeed so I can just uh, obtain a bunch of stuff, I can get new toys, you know? No, bless me indeed so I can bless others. And then what? Enlarge my influence, enlarge my territory, enlarge my ministry. And as you begin to pray that and I begin to pray that, guess what? God begins to enlarge the ministry here at Fellowship of the Nations. Not only here, but around the world, all right? And so when we see we can't do it on our own. So the third thing we ask is, oh, that your hand would be upon me. Let your presence be with me. I can't do it. Without your Holy Spirit flowing through me, I can't do it. And then the last thing is protect us. Protect us. Protect us from the evil one and the schemes and strategies of the devil. So we don't want to, we don't want to get into that, right? We want to say, God, protect me because I'm moving forward and, uh, and we're moving on. So we want to be a praying church. Second thing is we want to be a fasting church. Now, so those who have been here for a while, you understand what we do. For you who are new here, what we do is we do what we call a Daniel fast. And I want to share with you today about the Daniel fast. We, it's, it's three weeks, and, uh, and we'll go into that. So let's take a look at, at the scriptures. <clears throat> We're fasting here. We're going to do the Daniel fast. And I, I encourage, listen, everyone to participate. All right? That's everyone in here. All right, look at your neighbor, said he's talking to you. <laughs> All right, then ask him, are you going to do it? And go ahead and tell him yes. Yes, yeah, all right. Say, so I'm in, I'm ready, right? I am ready. We're rocking and rolling. <clears throat> We're going to make it happen. Anyway, so let's go back with a with little, little history for just a moment. When we see Daniel in 605 B.C., what we see is Nebuchadnezzar and, and Babylon, the Babylonian Empire, all right? They had Nebuchadnezzar there. And uh, because Israel had done wicked in the eyes of God, then God brought judgment upon their life. And so as he brings this judgment on them, he uses Nebuchadnezzar. So they go in, they, they defeat Israel, and they take a lot of people captive, but they take the choices, these young, good-looking, intelligent young men, and they take them, and they want them to be a part of their government. They want to train them in the ways of the Babylonians. And so Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, these, these four were some of the men who were there. And so they wanted them to, to act and, and be like the other Babylonians. And so the king came along and said, listen, I want you to feed them from the king's table. Well, apparently they had a bunch of fattening foods and some dainty stuff and everything that we've been eating the last, <coughs> last few weeks. And, uh, you know, and so Daniel said, he, he went to the guy who's the keeper, and he said, listen, I don't want to eat this way. This isn't our custom, this isn't our tradition, but if you could just do something, you know, help us in eating what we feel is best for us, we sure would appreciate it. And we find it right here, Daniel 1.8. He said, but Daniel determined in his heart that he would not defile himself by eating his portion of the king's rich and dainty foods or by drinking the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might be allowed not to defile himself. Prove your servants, I beseech you, for ten days and let us be given a vegetable diet and water to drink. And at the end of the 10 days, it was, it was seen that they were looking better and had taken on more flesh than all the youths who ate with the king's rich dainties. As for those four youths, here's what happens. God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all kinds of visions and dreams and in all matters of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king asked them, he found them 10 times better 
than all the learned uh, magicians and enchanters who were in the whole realm. Do you get that picture? He's saying, I want to do things different. So this is what I'm asking you to do. We're going to start on January the 10th. All right, it's kind of sundown on the 9th. We'll start on January the 10th, and we'll go through the morning of the 31st. Morning 31st, we will break fast. We will have breakfast, all right, which is where that comes from, if you didn't know that. And so, <coughs> so this, is what, this is what basically we're, we're talking about. This is going to be a, um, a fast. We're going to fast for, for three weeks now, this is why. Here's another portion of Scripture. He said, well, he only did it for 10 days. But in prayer and fasting, we see the story that they had. So my encouragement you, we're going to have recipes online, those type of things. So we're basically going to do vegetables with some fruit and mainly water. There's some other drinks, but, you know, we, we do no uh, carbonation, anything like that. Now, <clears throat> I do have people who say the coffee bean is uh, a vegetable. And... Uh, <clears throat> and and you know, and let me say from the very beginning, I am not the fasting police, okay? I'm not coming to your house and judging you if you're drinking something, all right? This is going to be between you and the Lord, all right? But my encouragement is spend the time. It's not so much what you're eating, uh, but focus on prayer. Focus on that. Let it be. I want to walk in obedience, all right? You can do this. Now, we tried for about three years to do just liquids only, and we did a 40-day thing. And we found out that it was like Lisa and I and then maybe one other person, all right? So, everybody go, man, you're crazy, man. We ain't doing that, all right? So, we, we, we started doing the Daniel Fast because it's easier, all right? You can do this. And so, I encourage you, so when, we, when we start this, that you would say, I am determined to allow the Holy Spirit to give me strength to go through this, all right? So, it's called, it's called the Daniel Fast. So, we're going to fast for for perseverance. We're going to be in the church with perseverance for three weeks. And the people said, amen. amen. All right. So this is just a training. So this is where we go. We get this. And Daniel, um, we're going to go back. We're, we're going to fast with a pure heart. And this is, this is the second point. Because God is saying, look at me. And here we go. Daniel 9, verse 3. And this is, he says this, and I set my face to the Lord. And that is true because that's what in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 it says, seek my face. And so Daniel is already doing that. He set his face to the Lord. He said, and I set my face to the Lord to seek him by prayer and supplication, look, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, who keeps covenant, mercy, and loving kindness with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and dealt perversely and done wickedly and have rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. What did he do? He humbled himself and he prayed. And it wasn't just him. I mean, here he is. I mean, he's, I think, a mighty man of God. I mean, he was walking with God, but he brought himself in and he included himself with all the other Israelites who had done perversely and wickedly. He didn't raise himself above them. So, you know, I mean, I'm holy, and I got gifts of dreams and visions and, you know, interpretations and stuff, and, you know, I don't know about them guys. He put himself in the whole picture. I think we as Americans maybe need to do the same thing because we have failed, and we have sinned, and I think the church has been silent way too long. And I think the reason why we're dealing with issues that we're dealing with, with no prayer in school or no Bible study and stuff like that, is because we as a church have been casual Christians and we haven't prayed and we hadn't fasted. And we were saying, well, you know, that's them over there and that's not us. No, that's us. That's us. And so I want to encourage you as you pray and you walk in humility, just join me in saying that we have sinned. And we have done perversely, and we have done wickedness. Because if I'm not telling this person who may be the, the drug addict or, or whatever you know, they're going through on this, in their, their addictions or anything else, if I'm not telling them about Jesus, then I'm not helping the problem, right? I am, I am being silent, and so they go on blinded by the God of this world, and there's no change. And so we have to come together as a church. Now, this isn't, this isn't condemnation on any of us, all right? That's not what this is for. But it's a recognition of, I can do better. I can do better. I can witness more. 
you know, God used me. So, so if we're beginning this prayer and fasting, God, I want you to do something in my life. So we want to be, be a church that not only fasts, but we want to be a church that prays with a pure heart. But the way we do that is we come and say, Lord, this is who we are. This is our church. Maybe we're not witnessing enough as, as fellowship of the nation. Maybe we're not reaching out as, as not we're not discipling enough. Whatever, let's just call it sin. And then let's move forward to a better 2015. Amen? Okay, I got five amens. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. Now, here's the other thing is we're going we're to fast for perseverance for three weeks. And this is what Daniel did. Interesting story. Look at Daniel 10, verses 2 and 3. It said, In those days, I, Daniel, I was in mourning for three whole weeks. I ate no pleasant or desirable food, nor did any meat or wine come into my mouth. And I did not anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your mind and heart to understand and to humble yourself, there it is again, before your God, your words were heard. Well, what, what is he doing? This is exactly what happened with 2 Chronicles 7:14. My people, Daniel, called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He did that. All right? And so he's been praying. And God heard him. He says, then I will hear from heaven. I'll hear the heal their land. But in this particular situation, we see that there's a delay. God heard him. God's bringing an answer. Now, this is an incredible story. All right? This, this is kind of pulling back the curtain on the spirit realm. All right? Now, I just want to take a moment just to help you understand maybe what I don't completely understand myself. But when we look in Ephesians 6, we look and, and we see there that there are principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? And so if you don't think that maybe ISIS is run and, and orchestrated by demons, you know, and rulers in spiritual wickedness and, and that, it's happening, all right? If you don't think that's, that's working here in America, oh, it's happening, all right? So that's not a spooky ooh-ah stuff, it's just reality, Okay, but greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen? Don't get any fearful thing going. God did not give us a spirit of fear. Just help you out here. But look what happened. He says, for the first day that you set your mind and heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, who is that? That's a spiritual being. It wasn't a man. It was a prince of the one who ruled over that in the spiritual realm. Look what happened. The prince of the, of the kingdom of Persia, he withstood me for 21 days. Now what I believe is we stop praying too soon. I think that we, we may pray for a couple of days and God didn't answer our prayer and we get mad at God and say, well, forget it. You know, try to pray. Try to do that thing. You know, I fasted for two whole days. And I, I ate potatoes and, and some carrots, and, man, nothing's happening. We're going to persevere, all right? We're going to persevere. We're going to hang in here, all right? In this situation, now some, some believe, because if you go on in, in the Scriptures, some theologians, they believe maybe that was Jesus, the angel of the Lord. But I, I, I believe that this was maybe just an angel, like a Gabriel bringing a message or something. Not sure who that is, but... The reason I say that is because God is omnipotent, all right? And I don't care who that king of Persia was, ain't nobody stopping Jesus, all right? You see what I'm saying? So God's omnipotent, so he's not going to have some king of Persia who's going to slow him down for 21 days, all right? So here's the angel coming, bringing the message, bringing the answer to him. And so he withstood me for 21 days. Then Michael, that's a bad man. That's a warrior right there, all right? Michael, who was the archangel, one of the chief princes, why? I want to stop a minute. This is on there, but let me tell you, there's a hierarchy in heaven too. All right? There's cherubim, there's seraphim. I mean, there are, it, it, it's, it's all in there. I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. All right? We're living here on this earth. I'm telling you, man, when we get to heaven, it's going to blow our minds. We're going to go, man, I didn't know it was all this stuff. This is awesome, man. You got angels up here. There's Michael. There's Gabriel. I mean, it's all, it's going to be incredible. All right, just seeing the throne in the crystal sea, read, reading Revelation, you know, it's going to blow your mind. So now we're getting ready for it. All right, we're tapping in to the eternal. And so you see that there, there was a hindrance. 
So one of the chief priests, he, he came to help me, for I remained there with the kings of Persia. He was stuck. This is what my prayer is, is that you would persevere, all right? I saw a movie last night. I was, inter- I, I was really interested in the story, all right, because uh, it was the guy, if you hadn't seen Unbroken, I just encourage you to see it, all right? A little bit of language in it, but it's a story of a man. If you hadn't seen the, the, the uh, commercials on, on television, but basically it's a story of a man. He was Olympic athlete, you know, and he's, he goes to war. They have a plane crash. He's out in the ocean for 40-something days, and then he gets picked up not by the Americans but by the um, uh, Japanese, and then he was in prisoner war camps, and he was tortured. I mean, all this stuff. But there's a, there a saying that his, that his brother told him when he was little. He said, if you can take it, you can make it. If you can take it, you can make it. And he took a lot of hardship, all right? Now, the movie does not end the story correctly, all right? It basically stops at the book, which is the 33rd chapter, but it goes on because he went, after he got back was really when he had his struggle, all right? Because he had all of this post-traumatic stress syndrome and all those type things like that. The movie doesn't show that. But he went to a Billy Graham crusade, and he got saved, right? And God totally transformed his life where he became unbroken, right? That's where. He had brokenness when he got back, but that's where he came back. And he eventually went back to Japan, and he forgave some of the very people who had tortured him, right? So I want you to have that same attitude. That's why I went to see it last night. I want to see what did he go through, and what I'm going through will be nothing compared to that. Because your body's going to go, you need a cheeseburger, if I can take it, I can make it. <laughs> I'm going to suffer for Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so, are y'all with me? Okay. Look, we can take it. We're going to make it. God wants to take us to the next level spiritually. And I'm, I'm telling you, I am excited about 2015. A lot of good things that, that are coming up, and I want, you, I want to get you ready. So, how do you begin your fast? Hopefully, every, everybody, if you did not get this, this piece of paper right here, all right, begin your fast. If you, if you got it, I just want you, you can, you can go along with me, but I had, uh, had them printed up so you can put it in your Bible. And this is what I want you to do. How do you begin your fast? Set your objective, all right? And here's the question. Why are you fasting? Well, pastor asked me to fast, so I'm, I'm going to just kind of go without meats and sweets and breads and, and stuff, and uh, hopefully I'll lose some weight. And, uh, I want you to pray about why. God, why do you want me to do this? Why do you want me to fast? All right? Is it spiritual renewal? Maybe you need just fresh fire in your life. All right? Maybe you do. You know, it's, it's, we get busy. You know, I, I mean, I'm asking that. I ask that a lot. God, let there be fresh fire, fresh wind of the Holy Spirit in my life. Why? Because sometimes, you know, the busyness of ministry can kind of, you know. But we move on. Maybe spiritual renewal, salvation of family and friends. If you have family and friends, what do you do? Write it down. Write their names down. Pray for them individually. I want to pray for them, salvation of family and friends, for guidance in personal matters or ministry. I've asked every single one of you in here to pray about leading a care group or a Bible study. Use your home. Meet somebody. I ask you, I want you to pray about that. You say, Lord, I can't. Good. That's exactly where you need to be because we can do all things through Christ. Amen? Amen? I want you to begin to see what God can do through your life. And, And immediately, the enemy who's Coming at you, even before this message is over, going, man, I don't think I want to fast. I don't think I want to pray about ministry. I don't think I want to do any of that stuff. We need to remove that and say, God, how can you want to use me? What do you want to do? Who do you want to pray for? All right? So, you see, salvation of family and friends, guidance in personal matters or ministry, and then healing. Pray for healing. There's, there's several people that we're praying for. I'm praying right now. As Colleen, she usually sits up here. Her 20-year-old son is in critical condition even this morning, all right? Been out to the hospital several times, stay with him, you know, just sit in there for literally hours praying that God would bring healing in his life, all right? I don't know who you're praying for, but pray. If it's a physical healing, spiritual, mental, emotional, whatever it may be, begin to pray. So we, we see 
You set your objective, and then make a commitment. All right? Now, let me say, I'm your pastor. I'm trying to shepherd the flock. I'm trying to help us be in one accord. When you look at the, the first church, the one thing it always says about the church in Acts was it says they were all in one accord. They were all in agreement. Whatever they were in, yeah, we're all in. All right? I'm asking you to be all in. As a team, I'm asking every single one of you that you would participate. It's going to be between you and, the, you and the Lord, but I'm asking all of us to participate and say, I want to do this. This is my time, all right? I want to have a, a new encounter with Jesus Christ, all right? So we, we look at this. So we want to, uh, how long? Uh, we're doing January the 10th through the 31st. And then let's look at the second one. How much time a day will you devote to pray in the reading of your Bible? All right? Just ask yourself that. How long? Maybe you need to get up 15 minutes early, you know? Again, I'm not the fast police. I'm not going to time you. I'm not coming to your house. Okay, how long do you pray? Five minutes? What? But if you've never prayed at all, five minutes may be awesome for you. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Again, you can take the U version. If you don't, if you got a smartphone, you can go to U version. You have an app. You can have a plan. All right? Get on that. All right? They got a lot of plans. You can do. read through the Bible in a year. Make that a commitment. I'm going to read through the Bible. I read through the Bible every year. All right? They've made it easy to do that. It's right there on your phone. So. Make your commitment. And this is to your Lord. And then this is what, it, you know, we say this a lot around here, but be committed to what you confess. Okay? It's if you confess, I'm going to do this. This is to the Lord. Lord, I want to do this. Then be committed to it. Okay? Now, prepare yourself spiritually. And here's what I want you to look at. Number one, unconfessed sin will hinder your prayers. I'm going to ask that as you... Or spend the time with the Lord. If the Lord reveals something in your life, confess it. All right? What does the Bible say? If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. So we stand on that. I'm forgiven. Now I'm moving forward. So now we move, we move forward. Unconfessed sin. Confess all known sin. Second one is seek forgiveness from all whom you have offended. If you know that you've offended somebody, if there's a break in a relationship, if there's something happened, Holy Spirit says, because even Jesus taught, if you come to the altar and you're sitting here worshiping and you got a problem with somebody, stop what you're doing and go get it right. Now, one of the biggest things that the enemy can use, now listen to me carefully, is unforgiveness. You got broken relationships, you think, oh man, I don't think I could ever get this fixed. Then that's a reason why you can pray. That may be one of the objectives, one of the things you want to commit. I'm going to pray for that, the healing of this relationship for three weeks. Now, let me say this. When I've talked about forgiveness in the past, I know in this room, some of you have been hurt tremendously by somebody, all right? Some of you have been, you've been abused. You may have been raped. There's been some type of violent thing done against you. I'm not saying that you have to go back to that person if it's a, a dangerous situation, all right, I'm not saying that. But in your heart, you can forgive. And you can release it. You don't want to be in that prison anymore of unforgiveness. All right, that bitterness. You know, every time their name comes up. <clears throat> no, you want to release all that. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I have talked with people. I know even in this room, there's a lot of hurt that's been done to you. But God is saying, now let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. One, it's not about them. It's all about you. I want to set you free. I want to bring peace and joy back into your life. I want to bring healing in that area of your life. All right? Uh, some of you, I'm, I'm telling you, some of you need to receive that. If you don't get anything else from this message, that's for you. You know what I'm talking about. Prepare yourself spiritually. Seek forgiveness from all whom you've offended. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Okay? You can't do this on your own. You can't, you know. I mean, we can, we can get up here and we can clap and jump up and down and go, man, we're going to fast for three weeks and 21 days and I can do it, you know. Well, about day eight, you're going to be going, we can fast. Oh, my God, how many days we got left? Jesus, help me. You need Holy Spirit to work through you, amen? To keep that joy flowing in your life, you've got, got to do it. So, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Surrender your life fully to Jesus as your master and Lord. 
All right? Yes, sir. When the master comes along, what does he say? He gives a command. Yes, sir. Hey, this is today. Guess what? We're going to fast today, but we're not going to focus on fast. We're going to focus on you, Jesus, and, uh, and we know I can do all things through Christ because you're going to give me the strength to do it. Amen? All right? Uh, you know, I, I got baked zucchini and, uh, and baked carrots, and hallelujah, and, and we're going to do it. And, and, and people said, amen, yes, yes. Then the, the last one here I want you to see, and I want you to underline this if you're looking at your paper. Do not underestimate spiritual opposition. Do not underestimate spiritual opposition, okay? Now, if you are a wife and your husband is not here, just say for an example, you know, and you go home and you start on the 10th and all you're fixing is fruits and vegetables, you may have some opposition, all right? If the enemy comes along, he's going to try to oppose you, you know? It's going to happen. So don't underestimate that. But what does it say? We submit to God, we resist the devil, and he flees from us. Amen? So you have to maybe keep, keep doing that. So prepare yourself physically, all right? Not only spiritually, but now physically. So consult your physician first if you're taking medication for any chronic ailment. Uh, or if you want to start an exercise class and you hadn't exercised in a while, you may want to go and, uh, and get, a, get a checkup. Now, seriously, you know, if you have, but, but this, this particular fast, I think you're going to be healthier than, than probably you've been in a long time. All right? So this is going to breathe some life into some of you. You know, I don't know how many of you are, I won't say the word addicted, but you like Cokes a lot. All right, 21 days, you know, maybe, you know, you could be fiending. <clears throat> so uh, just, just saying, that's, that's probably. So uh, the second thing is, and this goes to prepare yourself for temporary mental discomfort such as crankiness, impatience, and anxiety. All right, especially if you're living in a house and there's a, there's a lost one and they know that you're fasting, you know. They go, oh, you still pass Oh, shut up and leave me alone. <laughs> I'm doing this for Jesus, okay? <laughs> Give me some more zucchini. And I, there may be days you're going to get cranky, all right? If you choose that you're not going to be drinking any coffee, any caffeine, anything like that, you know, you may have some moments, all right? Just remember, Holy Ghost, help me, help me, help me, help me, you know, Right? I'm just telling you, I'm trying to prepare you. This, this message is to get you ready for what's getting ready to come. All right? That's what this is. I'm just teaching this lesson to help you. This is in the, you know, our normal service. But I'm trying to help you get it going. And then put yourself on a schedule. I don't know if many of you, if it's a habit of your life. But a, a disciple is a disciplined one. All right? A disciple is a disciplined one, and that's, that's why we need to be disciplined in our walk with the Lord. I encourage you, start your day off. I know some of you get up real early, you know, some of you 3.30, 4, 4.30 in the morning, whatever, but maybe just an extra 15 minutes. Just, just put it back an extra 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and let that 15 minutes or 10 minutes be the time that you're going to spend with the Lord. Maybe you have a little more time with that. You don't have to be at the office. You've got a little bit more flexible schedule then you can maybe have, have a little bit longer time. You know, I try in, in, in the morning, the first thing, when I get up, I grab my phone and I do my, my, my reading. And not only do my, my reading, I read a bunch of devotionals that go along with, with my plan. And then I have a prayer time. I just spend it with the Lord. That's before I ever get out of bed. Some people, we talked about that. If you got a chair, you know, I used to have a chair. Lisa stole it from me. And, I, and I've forgiven her, okay? And I'm not harboring any bitterness and, or anything like that. So begin your, begin your day in prayer and worship. Read and meditate on God's Word. And then you may want to prepare food in advance for meals. You know, it may be easy for you just to put some stuff in a crock pot and then go, and then when you get home, you know, you're going to have some, some thing there. Take sharp prayer walks at noon, interceding for our church, our community, and the nation. Okay? Then on four Saturdays, beginning with, uh, I think it's the 10th, we, we will uh, we'll be here on Saturday from 9 to 10. I encourage everybody, if you've got the schedule, if you're not working or whatever, we're only going to be here an hour. We'll do a, sh a short time of, uh, of worship, but we're going to pray as a church on Saturdays, and we will continue that. Then on the 31st, what we're doing is we're moving in 
to, um, we just call it a campaign if you want to, but really it's just our, our mission statement of winning souls and making disciples. But we are, are doing what we call in January, connect to win. Connect to win. You're going to see some posters coming up. They'll be everywhere. Connect to win. And we want to encourage you to pray about, I want to connect to win people. I want to connect to the church. I want to connect to serve. And on January the 31st, we'll have breakfast. We will break fast that morning. We'll spend time in prayer, have some worship. We're going to be over at Spanish Nation. But on that day, one of the things that we're going to do is, is uh, we're going to be teaching. We're going to have training in every area of ministry around this church. And what we're going to ask you to do over those 21 days is pray about what area God would have you serve in. And then when you come on the 31st, we're going to have a time of prayer, a time of worship, and then we're going to have a breakout session. And breakout sessions in every area, Kid Nation, Baby Nation, all around the church, there'll be breakout sessions, and you'll be able to meet with them, and you'll get training on how you can be an active part of ministry. Okay? Everybody get that? You can, thank you. Thank you. We got an amen here. We got an amen over here. And amen. How about in the back? We got an amen. All right. We want some amens now, okay? And the people said, amen. amen. All right. Listen, it makes it a whole lot easier. But I'm going to tell you, the reason why we're doing it, it's not because we need people for ministry. Listen to me carefully. Don't miss this. This is for your spiritual growth. Amen. This is for your spiritual growth. When you're serving God, guess what? You're growing. You're growing. You're not just sitting here on Sunday morning. I'm so glad you're here. All right, that you're here. But I promise you, God has made you a 10 in some area. You're a 10. There's a lot of areas you're a 10 in, I'm not. All right, and I can give you a whole list of areas I'm not a 10 in. Okay, but you are. We need 10s. And as you're a 10, what are you doing? You're finding how God has made you, is ministering to you. Amen? So, so what are we doing, church? We're moving forward. We're going to connect to win because there's, thousands of lost souls around here and God wants to use every single one of us in our walks with with our community and our, our our workplace every every place we are even our HEBs and our our different different grocery stores that you go to all those areas that you're in God wants to use you okay and he wants to help you so 2015 I'm praying is going to be the greatest year we've ever had at Fellowship of the Nations and it's going to be because you have humbled yourself, you've prayed, you've turned from your wicked ways, and God has heard your prayer, and you have connected in ministry. Amen? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Hello, I'm Johnny Brady. I'm lead pastor here at Fellowship of the Nations. I want to say thank you for tuning in with us today and our service. And really the heart of our ministry is to introduce you to Jesus. You may have been a Christian for a long time and we say thank you for, for tuning in and being a part of it. Hopefully you've been blessed today just by God's word and maybe just the worship service that gave you a little time to spend with worshiping the Lord. But maybe you are online because you're searching, you're looking for truth. And I believe the truth is in the Bible, the word of God. And the Bible simply says that Jesus loves you very much. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been and all the sins you may have committed. Matter of fact, the truth is we've all sinned. And the Bible states that very clearly. Romans 3, 23 says, we've all sinned. We've fallen short of God's glory. But it goes on to say in Romans 5, 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for you. That even though you've blown it, even though you've sinned beyond anybody's imagination of who they thought you were. We've all been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. But what God says is, I love you anyway. And let me de demonstrate it by this. I'm going to give my son, Jesus, to die in your place. He's going to take every sin you've ever committed and place it upon himself. And he did that on the cross. And the reason why is because he loves you and he wants a relationship with you. He was buried, rose again on the third day to conquer death, hell, and the grave. And basically what that means is, he says, I want to give you eternal life. I want to spend eternity with you. Not only does he create you in your mother's womb, not only does he have a purpose and plan for your life, but he says, I want to spend eternity with you. And so really what we have to do is we have to look at what has separated us from a holy God. And it's the three letter word, it's called sin. We've all sinned, we've all fallen short of God's glory. But God says, even though you've done that, if we will recognize our sin, repent, that means turn away from this lifestyle that we thought was right, and turn to Him to say, God, I've broken your commandments, I've sinned against you. And if you can love me, even though I've sinned like I have, and you can forgive me, you got me. 
Matter of fact, that's exactly what happened in my life. I looked at my sin and I looked at what I was doing with my lifestyle and I said, I need something better than this. And I just went home, I got on my knees and asked God to forgive me of my sin, to cleanse me. And I said, God, I'll live for you as hard as I've been living for the devil. And that's what he did. It wasn't lightning bouncing off the walls or anything like that. But he said, his word says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And I took him at his word. And I committed my life to follow him, repented of my sin. And the Holy Spirit of God actually came into my life just like he wants to come into yours. And he was my power source to give me strength to resist temptation and to overcome sin and, and to understand the schemes and strategies of the devil or even my own evil desires. And he came in and he saved me. And that's what we want to do today is just introduce to you Jesus, the one who loves you more than anybody on this planet. So if you're ready to make a commitment, I simply want to lead you in a prayer. But not just repeat a prayer, but mean it with all your heart. And if you would, you can just stare right at back at me, but I'd really like for you just to close your eyes and bow your head, and that you would just open your heart to Jesus and repeat this prayer. Let's pray together. Just pray this prayer. It's pretty simple, but it's profound. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I have sinned against you, and I'm sorry. I repent of my sin. I turn from my wicked ways, and I turn to you, Jesus. So I open the door to my heart. I invite you to come in. Forgive me of all my sin. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Save my soul. Give me eternal life. Baptize me in the power of your Holy Spirit so I may live for you, serve you, obey your word, love you all the days of my life. I ask in faith and I believe in my heart that you, Jesus, rose again on the third day so that I could be saved today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you meant that with all your heart, according to what the Word of God says, not me, but the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. And I believe that you've given your heart to Jesus and God has forgiven you. Now, it's a commitment. It's not a one-time prayer. It's like when you get married, you're committing to each other, going to live together, have a relationship together. Well, that's what it means to be saved, a commitment to live for Jesus and let Him be the Lord of your life. So this is what I want to encourage you to do. Find a Bible-believing church, get involved, get active, contact that pastor. Tell him that you have been saved and you want to serve God, get involved in a Bible study that's going to help you grow. It's all becoming like Jesus. That's what it means. If you're here in the Houston area, we're Fellowship of the Nations. You can go to FOTN.org and get our information. Man, we'd love for you to be a part of our fellowship if that's where God leads you. Listen, the main thing is spend time with Jesus every day. Talk to Him. He's listening. Get involved in church because God created you with purpose. He's gifted you now with gifts that you can use to build His kingdom. Now. We praise God for that. Get online, FOTN.org. Just let us know, hey, I received Jesus Christ today. He's my Lord, my Savior. And we'd like to send you some information, maybe even a Bible to get you started on reading God's Word. We love you. We thank God for what He's doing in your life. God bless you.